In this video we'd like to show you how you can prepare your elevator with useful joints to copy it into our marble course. So first we go to New, Model, and then click on Assembly Template. Give a name and say OK. And then we can insert our pre-built components for assembly, like the elevator shaft and the elevator cage. After inserting the elevator cage, we would like to um, modify the orientation, so define a higher height, so that the ground plate of the cage doesn't get covered from the shaft ground plate. So now we're done with our assembly and we can save it and then we want to open a new MCD file using our predefined template. In this new MCD file we want to insert our assembly and then we can move it so it won't fall of our ground plane and apply certain physical attributes like rigid body and collision body to both the cage and the shaft. we now start our simulation, we can move all parts around and they don't stay assembled as we would want them to. To deal with this issue, we add a sliding joint to our assembly. We define the shaft as base and the cage as attachment. Select the vertical axes as our movement axes set the upper li limit of 500 millimeters and confirm with OK. When we now start our simulation we can still move our elevator around but the cage and the shaft stay assembled. To set our elevator to a fixed position we add another kind of joint, a fixed joint. We select our shaft as attachment and confirm with OK. In our case we don't want to move the elevator at all, so we don't need to define a base. It'll just stay within its position in the room. In the simulation we can see that only the cage moves. The shaft is fixed to its place. Now we want the cage to move automatically. For this we need a position control. We need to define the sliding joint as our object and then we want to decrease our acceleration and deceleration and provide a fitting name for it. We can watch and modify our control during runtime. For this <coughs> we need to start the simulation and then select or control and switch to the runtime inspector tab. There we can define our position target and the position control will automatically move the elevator to that position. Also, if we try to apply force to our cage, it won't move because the position control works against it. In the end, we can also delete our ground plane because we won't need it. 
we will only want to insert our elevator. Back in our physics navigator, we can summarize what we've done today. We have applied physical attributes like rigid body and also inserted two kinds of joints the sliding joint, the fixed joint, and also added a position control. Now we are going to show you which parts we inserted. There is a ramp, a bridge, a conveyor belt, a box, and our elevator, which we showed in another video, our two-axis physics, um, our containers, then we have the marble here in our tube, which is a little high, uh, hidden, then a pipe, uh, a slider, which can close our marble run, and then we have an electromagnet which is mounted on our mounting component of our two-axis system. Then we have different properties for our components. We have collision bodies and rigid bodies. And you can see them here. And then you can see our joints, mostly sliding joints, but also fixed joints. And we also have a prevent co collision property or some. And on the bottom you can see that we have poli position controls. Let's take a closer look at our conveyor belt. If we select it as our assembly, we see that its simulation points are more than 10,000. This is why we will only define parts of it as collision body. If we left click and hold, we can select different objects of our assembly. We select the sheets of our conveyor belt and define them as collision bodies. Also, we will adapt the shape of those collision bodies. If we choose multi-convex, we have 18 instead of 700 simulation points. The last property we want to add to our conveyor belt is the ability to transport our boxes. This is why we need a transport surface. We select a face of the belt and then choose the velocity parameter as 300 and save our object. When we start the simulation we see that the box moves The next thing we want to let move is the marble. Right now it just stays within the tube. This is why we double click on the collision body and then select further options through the arrow down symbol. There we can define an initial speed for our marble. We define it as 100 and confirm. When we start the simulation we see that our marble moves as we desired, but it is not stopped by our slider. This is why we are going to adapt the position control of the slider. We simply define the destination of our sliding joint as 60 millimeters. In the simulation we see that the sliding joint is moved rapidly and closes our gate. So we see that through our control objects we already have 
all actors ready to use. So now let's create some sensor objects. We place the first sensor in a position in which the marble can fall into the box as we stop the conveyor belt. For this we define with the function two points and heights a new block. As first point we define 400, 550 and 800 and as a second point 550, 560 and 80. We leave the dimension height as it is. The last thing to make it a sensor is to define the hole as a collision sensor in the electrical section. To distinguish our sensor from other objects we assign a color to it. For this we go to the part navigator, right click on our object and select assign feature color. Then we add our collision sensor to our runtime inspector as we select that option in our right click menu of the component. To better see the triggering of our sensor object we choose a slow time scaling for our simulation. As we see the box arrive let's pay attention to the triggered value. It is true as the box collides with the sensor. Now we want to copy the first sensor we do this through right click on the block in the part navigator and selecting copy. As we paste it with standard settings it will be created as new object. To be able to see the new object we need to move it under the tab tools move object. It is not defined as component that's why we can't move it as usual. Because the object we duplicated was a model with no physical attributes, we still need to define it as collision sensor. For demonstration, we will also add our new sensor to the inspector and show you how our marble run works. Both of the sensors get triggered by the box. Now let's move on to our electromagnet. For this we select our collision body of the electromagnet and then select the checkbox stick when collision. This simulates the behavior of our electromagnet. As we control this attribute we switch the magnet on or off. Also we add our two axis position controls to the inspector to be able to manually alter the set points during runtime. The same goes for our electromagnet. Here we need to bring the two components to a collision and as this happens while our sticky attribute is true it will stick even though our gravity works against it. We let the box fall as we deactivate the sticky attribute. If it doesn't work correctly we might need to adapt the sticky force in File, Preferences, Mechatronics Concept Designer and then in the tab Physics Engine we can adapt it.